Hello everybody and welcome to another episode. In today's episode I'm going to show you how to properly remove and clean the EGR valve along with the EGR cooler, the intake manifold along with the throttle body and all the pipes and the hardware from around it. So today I'm working on this Volvo XC14 from the year 2020 and I have to clean all of these parts because the car is starting hard, it's working hard and I also have some errors on the dashboard which is telling me that the intake manifold and the EGR valve are not working properly as they should. So today I'm going to show you all how to do all of these things, how to remove them and how to install them back on this kind of car. Right everybody, so as you can see, this kind of engine which I'm working on today, it's installed on different models made by Volvo. So even if you don't have a car exactly like this one, probably you'll have an S16 or an S14, but you'll still have the same engine like I have right here. So this video is for you. This video will help you and it will guide you on how to do this kind of job at home without having to pay someone else to do it in your place. So to begin this kind of job, what you have to do first is to remove the connector which is going into the MAF sensor. After that you have to remove the big clamp which is securing the big hose mounted onto the air filter box. And then you have two more clips which you have to remove from the top part of the air filter box and two more screws which you have to remove using an 8mm socket. After you remove all of these things, you have to lift the air filter box up and it will come out from the engine bay and in this way you can put it away. After that, the next step which you have to do is to remove all the connectors from around the intake manifold which are coming out from this uh, huge um, wiring line and you'll also have to remove four screws which are securing this huge wiring line mounted over the intake manifold and over the rest of the parts from around it. After that, what you have to do is to remove the two hoses which are going out from the high fuel pressure pump and you'll have to put them away and also after that you'll have one metal hose which is going from the high fuel pressure pump into the injector number two. After that, I recommend all to also disconnect the connector from the high fuel pressure pump because in this way you'll have no risk of breaking it or bending it in any way where you can create any damage. After that, you have to remove this metal pipe which is coming out from the EGR valve and which is going into the intake manifold. Also, you have four screws which are securing it mounted in place. Moving on, you'll have to remove the vacuum container and you'll have to remove three screws which are securing it mounted in place with a Torx 30. After that, you can go ahead and remove the screws which are securing the intake manifold mounted in place and you'll also have to remove the clamp which is securing the throttle body mounted to the hose which is going into the intercooler.
Before trying to remove the anti manifold, I recommend all to remove the anti manifold actuator, which is mounted right here on the right side, because if you don't remove this actuator, you won't have access to lift it up from the engine. So it's better to remove it right away and you'll have to install it back after you install the anti manifold back on the engine. So right here I still don't have enough space to lift it up from the engine so the next step which I have to do is to remove the metal pipe which is coming out from the high fuel pressure pump to the injector number 2. You'll have to remove the two ends using a 70mm key and you'll have to remove the little screw which is securing it mounted in place with a Torx 30. As you can see right here, the anti-manifold is coming out pretty easy right away because I removed all the parts which are securing it mounted in place and as you can see, the only thing which you have to do is to lift it up, you'll have to move a little bit the cables from around it and it will come out from the engine. Also, in this position I recommend all to clean the engine very well where the anti-manifold was installed and after that you can move ahead and remove the EGR valve from this kind of engine. Alright everybody, so from this position I hope you all are able to see exactly what I removed from this engine to be able to do this kind of job. So as you can see, all of these hoses and pipes and the connectors are disconnected and only by disconnecting them too, you will be able to do it yourself at home and with normal tools. So as you can see, I didn't remove anything which was unnecessarily. All the parts which I removed and which I disconnected are very important and you have to disconnect them too if you want to do this kind of job. So as you can see, right here is the hose which is going into the intercooler from the throttle body and right here in the corner are all the connectors which I removed from the EGR valve from the intake manifold actuator and right here in the right side I have the connector which is going into the max sensor from the air filter box. So right here I have the actuator from the intake manifold and as you can see this actuator it's uh, moving the flaps from the intake manifold and in my case the actuator was not in the normal position was out of the position and this is why I think I had the error with the intake manifold flaps on the dashboard and as you can see right here this is the throttle body the shutdown throttle body and as you can see it's moving pretty good it's not in a very bad condition but I will clean them Anyway, so as you can see, in my case the flaps are closed, but the actuator normally it's open. So this is why I had the problem. The flaps were always closed because the actuator was not in the normal position and the actuator was not moving the flaps. So as you can see, normally this little bracket should be into the right position at the top max. And in this way is meaning that it's closed and is not working as it should work. Alright, so from here what you have to do next is to remove the EGR valve from the engine. And as you can see, I already cleaned the top part where the intake manifold is sitting on the engine. And if you want to remove the EGR valve, you have to remove three screws which are securing it mounted to the engine. You have the first one right here, then the second one is right here, and the third one is right underneath. After that you have to move to the side and you have two more screws which are securing it mounted to this metal pipe. And you have to use a Torx 40 to remove them. And you also have one more screw right here underneath, underneath this pipe, which is connecting another pipe mounted to the EGR valve. After that, you'll have to remove two hoses. One of them is right here, and the other one is right here in the right side, which you have to remove if you want to remove the EGR completely out from the vehicle.
By now I removed all the screws and all the connectors which are securing the EGR valve mounted to the engine and from here I can just pull it out from the engine and it's coming out very easy in this way. Alright everybody, so as you can see, I removed all the parts from the engine and this is how the engine is looking so far. Right here in the right position, the EGR is mounted, you have to mount it to this hole, right here, then you have the hole right here. The third one is right there at the bottom, I hope you all can see it. You have to remove this hole from right here and also the hole from the right side, this one. After that, we have to remove right here a little screw which is securing the EGR valve mounted to this pipe and we have two more screws right here which are securing it mounted to this pipe. Moving forward, let's go ahead and check the EGR valve if it's working correctly or not. Normally, you'll have to remove this plastic cap from right here, you'll have to remove it from the corners, you'll have one clip on each corner, and you'll have to lift it up, and inside it, you'll have a little flap, which you'll have to push, and if it's coming out um, normally, if it's moving freely, this is meaning that the EGR valve is working correctly, and you should know, you, and you should have no problems with it. Just wait a second until I'm removing this plastic cap. Ok everybody, so I placed my phone away because I was not able to do it with one hand, so I had to use both of my hands. And as you can see, you have to lift it up, and right here it is a little flap, the little actuator, which is not working correctly. Normally, it should move back freely, you should have to move it up and forth with no resistance, and as you can see, if you move it in one way, it's staying it one way, so this is meaning that the EGR valve is blocked. This is why I have to clean it, this is why it's not working properly, and also this is why I have the error on the dashboard. So as you can see, right now I will clean everything very good and I will come back to show you how normally those parts should work and how those parts should look in the brand new condition. Ok everybody, so as you can see, I'm back with all the parts cleaned from the car. As you can see, right here it's the EGR cooler, I cleaned it the best way I could. I cleaned it inside and outside with pressure washer, with uh, uh, high pressure uh, air and so on. So as you can see, right now it's in the best condition of itself. Right here I have the EGR valve, just look how the EGR valve is looking right now. It's looking very good, it's clean and it's also working perfectly. So earlier you also saw how the EGR valve was blocked and how the actuator was not moving and as you can see right here, the actuator is moving freely, is moving very well and this meaning that the EGR valve is in a very good condition. So as you saw, everything is clean, everything is working how it should work. Right here I have the throttle body along with the intake manifold, I cleaned it the best I could. One thing I recommend all is to not use any metal pipes or in any metal tools to clean it inside because you can damage the plastic. You'll have to clean it with a wire brush or a toothbrush very well and with some chemicals with some universal degreaser it will make you a very good job. Also I removed this sensor from the intake manifold, I cleaned it the best way I could and I placed it back over the intake manifold. Right here I have the actuator from the intake manifold, as you can see, it's also cleaned very well, it's working perfectly fine, so from here the only thing which I have to do next is to assemble everything back together on the car, I have to tie everything back together, I have to ensure that everything is uh, closed, everything is fitted perfectly, because if it's not I will have problems, I will have leaks, so you'll have to take your time and in this way you will be doing very well.
all right everybody as also i assembled everything back together on the engine everything is looking great and it's feeling great so far so the only thing which i recommend all to do is to do one more check you'll have to check all the connectors all the fittings all the pipes and if everything is good you can go ahead and start the engine in my case from what i can see and from my experience everything is installed perfectly fine from here i'll have nothing to worry about i can go ahead and start the engine from the first time just here how the engine is starting As also, the engine did start pretty well, I didn't have to struggle with anything, so this is meaning that the job is done very good. So as you can see, this is how the engine is sounding and is looking. Right now, it's a very good moment to check for any leaks, for any weird sounds or something like that. The only thing which I have to do next is to fill the reservoir with a brand new coolant and after that, everything is done. I will go back inside the car and I will stop the engine and I will start it one more time to see if it's stopping correctly and if it's starting correctly again. So just do what I'm doing right here. Alright everybody, so as you can see, the engine is starting perfectly fine, everything is as it's supposed to be, so this is meaning that the job is done. Thank you for watching, if you like this video and found it informative, please leave a like and a comment down below. See you next time.